What's up, my man? How I'm you here doing? with Dave Pazic, guitarist of Dream Wake today. How you living? I'm living well. Thanks for asking, man. How about how about you? I'm living, dude. I wanted to have you in today to talk more about Dream Wake and all the branding stuff that I think you guys have done so well with Dream Wake. Yeah. So I assume most people who've gotten this far know Dream Wake have seen some of what you're up to. But in your words, what is Dream Wake? What is the brand? What is the image? What is the style? Like kind of, yeah, where do you guys start? Um, well, the first thing I have to say is Wavecore. That's okay. that's kind of our word that we're that we're implementing into the scene right now. It's okay. essentially synth wave metalcore, but we took wave and core, so that's okay. what we're that's what we're going for right now. Um, sort of, you know, we we sort of took the image from a, a synth wave type band and meshed that with um, you know metalcore and stuff that we're super familiar with in the in the metal scene, and you know just combined those two things and created something that we think is awesome. So that's really okay. what it is. Um, lower your mic just a little bit okay. for me with this. Yeah. This right little here. knobby. Boom. Um, okay. So we got this like 80 synth wave vibe thing. Like how did that come to be? Like, how did you guys decide like, this is our, this is our thing? Well, so I was kind of thinking about it the other day and it, you know, honestly, from the beginning of when I started to do music, I've, I've sort of gone for the same thing always. I just, it's been a process of actually learning how to execute it the right way, okay. you know, and I, it's been sort of like a process of like looking within myself and finding what's, what's truly going to bring my music to the best, you know, best of my abilities and all that stuff. Um, you know, and recently all, every single person in my band became huge synth wave junkies. Like we just, we listen to synth wave nonstop. Like that was like the midnight, of course, that's, yep. that's our, one of our biggest influences. And then, you know, bands like F, FM 84, Time Cop 80, 1983, um, we just, that's something we just love a lot. It makes us feel great when we listen to that music. There's really no, nothing else to that. And we love metalcore. We just, you know, one day we kind of decided to mesh the two. We thought it would work pretty well. Maybe add some sax and it just came to be way, way cooler than we could have thought. And it worked out well. Yeah. I think you guys like integrated it well and it's a really weird into, or a cool integration of a lot of different elements that don't normally go together, but somehow it feels very natural and feels like it belongs together. Well, Hell yeah. like, was it hard to kind of come to this look for dream week? Like I, you mentioned, like you, yeah, gone through other things. You felt like you always tried to do the same thing. Like how did this work this time compared to other times? Um, I mean, it, it's honestly working better than we could have even imagined this time around. And it's, like I said before, it's been a process of just kind of like trial and error, which is, I mean, we've, we've learned everything from the ground up ourselves pretty much with, you know, obviously there's been people who have helped us here and there, but, um, you know, it's just been, a, it's just been trial and error every single time. Um, and so, you know, now it's sort of, it was just, it was just felt right. That was really what it was. It, it, you know, we started writing music and we were sort of lost on where we wanted to go. But then we, there was just one day, there was one song I remember that kind of found our sound completely. And it, you know, that it just, everything kind of is supposed to encompass everything as a whole, as far as our image and our sound and everything. And it was just kind of like, it clicked that one day. It was just the whole thing came together, like the whole image, the whole picture. So do you know what that song was or what that day was? I'm curious. Yeah, I so, imagine you and Bob sitting in a room and just like a light bulb moment, both you guys. I can't say because delicating. the song isn't out and gotcha. neither is the the release that's the same title. Got gotcha. you. But it it was, um, it, it's funny because the song and the release are called the same thing, but they're not going to be released at the same time. Okay. Doesn't make any sense if I say it like that. But um, we we basically wrote this one song it wasn't, it was just completely out of our comfort zone for what we were used to like back then. It was probably a couple of years ago. And, um, and even now we want to rework the song, but it just, it unlocked this new sound for us, like a new image. And it just like within our heads, it kind of just created this entire, it painted this entire picture, you know, something that we've kind of been looking for the whole time. Interesting. So you think, so Dreamwake's still evolving in your eyes. Like, I guess in my eyes, like you've had the couple singles that you've had a music, couple music videos that like you, I, and in my mind, it feels like you've kind of found it. And you're saying right. that, no, 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 we've, we had this and now we're refining it even further. And we feel like we found a whole new step of that a new level of that. In a way. Yeah. It's like, it, it was almost like I knew like in past days, I knew what I wanted, but I just didn't know how to bring it about or I didn't have the the knowledge or, and, and I hadn't heard synth wave yet either. You know what I mean? Like that was something that really showed me how to bring the synth aspect into our, into our music and stuff like that. Um, but y yeah, I mean, it was just, like I said, it just, it clicked. I'm excited. Yeah. How does you think that like helps dream wake to have that image that you guys or that style that you guys work so well, like keeps using image. I think it's more than that. It's a sonic thing as well. And of course that's, yeah. 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 Visual. Um, I mean, it definitely establishes us as something a little different, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and it, you know, it 
people will remember us that way. And that's part of like, like the whole conversation we're having is the branding and branding is super important for that reason. Um, you know, especially this day and age where everything is images and videos and stuff like that, you need to kind of bring a, you need to paint a picture for the people who are listening. You know, Mm -hmm. you can have awesome music, but you know, the reality of it is now is you have to have super, you have to have super good branding to go with it. Yeah. The word branding is so interesting to me because it's, uh, it's a business word. And I like, when yeah. you get into music, you're always like, oh no, it's cool. The artist just is who they want to be. And the band just is who they want to be. Right. And you get to a point and it's like, no, yeah. Like Kiss did want to wear makeup. Probably like that was probably somewhat yeah. genuine. <laughs> but at a certain point, it's like, no, this is our image. This is what we do. Right. And we got to keep growing this thing and making it bigger and having the bigger shoulder pads or whatever. Right, like right, the, right. Whatever the thing is. like Spike our hair up a little higher, you know? Yeah. And I think it's interesting to start to look at bands in that sense of like, it is art and it is genuine, but it also has to be targeting and int- targeted and intentional and genuine. Right. And, and uh, yeah, I don't know. I wonder, I wonder. It's a balance, you yeah. know, it's a big balance of, of all those things you just said, you know, it's like you, you want it to be genuine from, from, you know, yourself, but you also want it to be something that's going to catch on with other people mm-hmm. and something that's also going to be unique from the crowd. You know what I mean? It's, you kind of have to have the whole formula, which is, I mean, I'm no guru. I'm still, <laughs> I'm still learning that myself every single day, you know? Yeah. So I say that with, uh, a lot of humility, but sure. Um, yeah, that's kind of it. What was that like learning process? You've kind of mentioned that you you mentioned a couple times now that you've like tried something, failed it. You feel like you're just kind of hitting your head against the wall and getting the same result. Like I know, yeah, I look back at the in honor of days are kind of some of the right. glory days in my brain. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, and I, again with an honor of, I think you you had this symbol. It's kind of like a letter eight looking thing with like a side missing. Yeah, and like, yeah. That's an early attempt at branding. Of course, I think it's right. a thinner and smaller version than what Dreamwake has done so well. Right. But it's interesting to look back and be like, oh, yeah, this is 16-year-old Dave. Kind of the seeds are starting to get exactly. planted and figure it out. Like, right. yeah, what did you learn from that? What ultimately failed there? And how did that help Dreamwake grow into the yeah, synth core that it is now? I mean, <clears throat> so that – well, so funny, before I before I kind of answer that question, that that symbol was actually a Viking rune okay. that we flipped upside down to to mean the opposite of what it actually meant. Okay. You know, so like we. What did it mean? Uh, essentially, like so, flip the right way. It meant like unity and peace and everything. So we flipped it to mean the opposite because edgy. Yeah, I think our yeah, you know, edgy. We wanted to be angsty. You know, we basically that, wanted that, the anarchy a without putting the right, anarchy right, right, a. right, right, yeah. right. So we did that, but yeah, that was kind of like, <clears throat> you know, like I was told that was. A, I remember that was actually like the first time I was told about branding Mm -hmm. as a thing, you know, like people were kind of like, you know, you need a brand, you need to sort of develop an image, this and that. And I was like, okay, well, you know, I didn't really get it at the time, like fully, like I said, uh, obviously it's been a huge process and this is, we're talking like probably five, six years ago now. Yeah. Um, you know, it, I just, so I tried to, we tried to come up with a, a symbol that people would maybe remember. That was Mm -hmm. like our first, our first thought was like, okay, we need to come up with something that people remember. That's the point of a brand. So we can't. We kind of just looked through things and decided what we wanted to come up with as a meaning, and that's what we found. Um, and but there was really nothing to it. You know what I mean? It was just that symbol yep. and just like some colors that we would we would we would try to keep to like certain colors, I guess, with our yeah, sure. with our releases and our artwork and stuff like that. And you know, like it was like a half-ass type of branding. It wasn't. Mm-hmm. It wasn't really. You know, it didn't have any depth to it. Yeah. Um, but like now our brand is more like, there's, like I said, there's obviously, it comes from the soul, you know, yeah. there's, there's a lot of like, there's a, there's a picture behind it. There's a whole, there's a whole meaning that, you know, is bigger than just look, we're a band and here's our, here's our logo, you know? Yeah. I know, uh, yeah. With earlier bands, I know you poured your heart and soul into them. You probably worked on them for years. Like, was it hard to kind of pick yourself up from that and try and make this Dreamwake thing, the Dreamwake vibe go? And I think also now it's easy to say like, oh yeah, the Dreamwake vibe was the right choice. But when Dreamwake started, you don't know what the right choice is and you don't right. know it's going to work out as well as it has or, yeah, hopefully as well as it will continue to. Right. It, I mean, it's that that's a funny question just because there's not really like one instance that sort of like changed me to realize where I need to go. It's mm-hmm. just certain things like it's just certain events and certain learning experiences kind of overlap and they've all taught me different things, you know. Like, it's really weird in a way because with this band, everything has kind of fallen into place better than everything else before, like, tenfold, you know? Mm. And it just seems like a lot of what I learned in the past has, like, built me up to where I am now, you know? And I'm sure even what I'm experiencing now is going to build me up to where I'll be in another five years, you know? But... You know, that that's kind of how it feels with this, really, is, like, it, you know, I feel like it was meant to, like, like, 
I've just gone through a lot of shit, honestly, with all the bands that we've been through. Yeah. And it, uh, you know, I felt like it built me up to kind of learn what I needed to learn and be where I need to be today. You know, so that uh, process of like being humbled by failure is just such a it's such a constant theme to everyone's story. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Seriously. I think back to all the shows I shot and it's like, yeah, you show up and there's seven people there and it's yeah. like how many people are going to be interested in what i'm working on yeah. tonight if they could have if yeah they couldn't get people to show up from the hometown right or yeah you show up and everything's just unprepared and it's a shit show and you're like ah, how am i supposed to succeed given these circumstances and you slowly like learn like yeah i gotta be patient here i gotta take a breath here and even when the, the thing's dog shit it still has the show must go on in a sense like you still right. When you show up, yeah, the first band you play the show and no one's there, it's like we still got to figure out how to put on a good show here and have fun and do what we can for these few people to have some some time. And I think, yeah, reflect on those failures, like you said, and then going five years ago, I was here. Right. At five years ago, I'm now or currently I'm here. Where in five years am I and how do I keep working towards that? Right. It's that's that's sort of what it's a that's a weird thought to have just because um, I mean. I, I take, I'm a, I'm a take it day by day type of person. You yeah. know what I mean? Especially, I feel like as a creative, you kind of have to be like that yeah. because every day can be different if you, if you're really involved with what you do. But, um, you know, I mean, as of now, you know, in five years, I hope to be, I hope to be just continuing on with what I'm doing. Um, I don't know where it's going to go, but that's, you know, that's a, that's a very intricate thought to have, you know, yeah. it's like, where will you be in five years as a creative? Cause really you don't know. You know, you just have yeah. no idea. Like five years ago, I didn't think I would be where I am yeah. for many different reasons. I mean, <laughs> it's just, you know, I didn't think I would be, I just didn't picture life the way it is, if yeah. that makes any sense. Like no, but nobody I really no does. Can, yeah. But, you know, I mean, I, I feel like that's part of why, like, why that's also why I am the way I am today is just because everything, everything's kind of shown me how to be, I guess, even as just a person, not even just as a musician, but just everything. And it's sort of everything. I try to tie everything that has meaning to me into what I do, mm -hmm. you know, and put out into the world. So, yeah, I think the day by day part is such a weird part of a creative. I'm wired as a planner. Like it's just, yeah, my, my goal, my, everything about me wants to plan, wants to have structure, wants to know when things are happening. Same. And I had to get beaten down by this job to be like, no, that's not an option. Like it's yeah. just, you can make structures within the piece you have, but every plan is subject to change. Everything's going to be different. Yeah, right. I've never, I don't think I've ever had a treatment for any any plan that went 100% to plan. Everything you show up and it's like, oh, the ceiling's five feet lower than we thought it was. Yeah. That slash yeah. this. Or mm -hmm. this cable just died. This outlet just died. Now what? And, and on a bigger scale of life, it's like, yeah, we thought we were going to get this show. We thought this album was going to come out. We thought we were going to have a release, but then there was this huge issue in the world for the last 18 months that stopped us from releasing right, things right, we right. wanted. Like, Dude, yeah, I, it's tough just, to roll those punches. You just spoke my entire brain. <laughs> like, that's, I mean, essentially, that's what we, what you deal with as a musician is I thought yeah. it was going to go this way and it didn't go that way, but it went this way. You know, I mean, it's just, you you really never know what's going to happen. And I feel like it's, it's funny because this kind of relates back to what we were talking about right before we started this conversation mm -hmm. um, about how, you know, sometimes I fear change, I guess. And I feel like that's maybe one of my big things that I have to learn going forward to take myself, you know, to the next level as a, as a musician and a creative, you know, what is, yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, um, you know, I kind of forgot what I was going to say. You're good. So. What does that look like to you? Like, what is it, what are things that you think you would have done if you were less scared of change or what are, yeah, I guess within the realm of dream, like I'm sure it's a huge loaded life question, but, <laughs> um, yeah, within the realm of dream, like what are things that. Yeah, could be different. It could be better in a in a different world. I feel like I would maybe be more, um, you know, because I still work a day job mm -hmm. and do my band and stuff like that, and I'm working on my music. But I feel like I would maybe be more career oriented mm -hmm. in the in the music industry as far as, um, you know, recording, writing, anything like that. Like I could, I I have the confidence that I could I could write songs for people and sell mm -hmm. them, or I could track for people's bands and the studio things like that, mm -hmm. or even teach lessons on. Maybe not, you know, so much theory lessons, but lessons on how I how I construct my songs and how, you know, the, the things I do know that I could share with people to help them, you know? Yeah, I think it's uh, tough to look ahead. And you're right. Yeah, we have no idea where we are in five years. And also, I don't know who to be interested by in five years, which is the other kind of weird part of this that I right. think when you get a, yeah, if you're in a business, if you're at a job, you kind of know, like, in five years, I can become the manager of it. And after that, there's a supervisor level. And it's kind of like, I don't, yeah, I don't know what that roadmap is. I don't know in five years, do I, 
yeah, what part of this is interesting to me? Am I only in 3D realm? Am I only animated stuff? If it's only video, is it only photo? Like, what is the thing? Uh, and it sounds like for you, it's a similar thing. With Dreamwake, it's like, yeah, it's hard to plan for the future because, one, we don't know what we're going to, like, yeah, you don't know the future of what you're creatively going to do, but also, like, we don't know when the tour is going to get offered. We don't know when the show is going to drop. We don't know right. when the streams are going to go up. Like, it's as much as I want to plan and be proactive in my life, and I'm, uh, personally, I believe that like setting goals is really a good thing to do, but I'm terrible Definitely. at it. Like I have no sense of like, yeah, I'd love to set a five year roadmap of like, this is my milestone for year one, two, three, four, five to get yeah, this big, yeah. but like, what you the just, fuck is the five year milestone and who cares? You yeah. It doesn't exist because every, every single person. And I mean, I'm the, probably the millionth creative person to say this, but every single person has a different path. Yeah. You know, not, no one has the same, the same path to their success or whatever, whatever it may be for them. So it's just everyone, you sort of have to just roll with the punches. And there's a lot of punches, so you just got to roll with them. Lots of rolling, you know? yeah. <laughs> lots of rolling, lots of punches, lots of rolling, you know? But I, um, yeah, I think it's an interesting ebb and flow. And it's fun to me to talk to people. Yeah, I'm talking to you as a band person. I've talked to other audio people. And it just seems like everyone has this same story of like, this shit has no business working out. Like, I don't know how I got here. I don't know where I'm going to keep going. And I don't really believe that I have any ability to be here. Like, it's right. somehow worked up and I'm happy where I am, but I'm also kind of insecure in it. And I'm, I would like to take the next step. And that is even more insecurity and more fear behind right. this next step. Um, what are things you do to work on that and kind of trying to overcome that and try and, yeah, be present in the moment? Or I don't know if getting on stage is the challenge. Sometimes it's how do I, in this five minutes before stage, get ready for this? Like, yeah, what is that? What is one version of that challenge for you and what are things you work on to yeah, be the best version of Dave in that moment? Um, so, I mean, really one of my hardest things is probably decision making, yeah. you know, because that, that goes along with kind of being afraid of change, you know. So, I mean, I don't really know what I <laughs> – I don't honestly do anything in the moment to help myself with decision making. Yeah. I kind of just – you know, you, you sort of just, you make decisions and you find out if they're right or wrong <laughs> afterwards. So that's, that's Absolutely. the fun part about life. I think the fun but, part with the band there is that it's a creative part and that the, ultimately there is no wrong choice for Dreamwake. Like everything you're doing is progress and everything you put out is a step forward and it yeah. might not be the perfect step forward, but what is the perfect yeah, step forward? And right. Yeah, only, I uh, use Lorna Shore as an example of the last couple of days, but like only they realize how perfect of a step that song is and right. how well that worked out. And right. like they were in the studio and they thought it was cool, but like they never knew it was never, gonna yeah, do what it did. Didn't know it was gonna do as much as it did. They deserve yeah. every second of it. Oh, absolutely. But like, yeah, they were in the studio going, We have a cool song, hopefully our fans like it. And yeah. then it's like, oh no, our lives just changed. In yeah. Six but that's minutes. that's usually how that happens though. You yeah. know, no one's expecting it when something like that happens, yeah. you know. But um but I think it's cool to be in the studio and yeah, just have that I think it's cool that every chance has that opportunity to be that thing and you don't know which single it's going to be and what that thing is. And it's fun to kind of sit in the pocket of like, let me just create the most fun things for me and something will pop off maybe, but I'm going to really enjoy the process. Right. And it's fun. It's like a slot machine almost where it's yeah. like, I don't think this is going to happen, but I'm going to keep doing the thing I love and it mm -hmm. might actually happen. Right. And I think that's sort of, um, that, you know, now that I think about it, that's sort of what I do to, to get myself to, to move forward is I try to get in my zone as much as I possibly can, you know, mm -hmm. like I, I work a lot of hours, but when I come home, I, you know, I, I try to play guitar as much as I possibly can, write, learn new music, stuff like that. I just, I keep in my zone and I remember like the core reasons as to why I do what I do. And yeah. that, that sort of is what drives me to, you know, deal with the tough shit and sort of put myself through positions that might be uncomfortable for myself, but you know, that would be for the better for the band or whatever it may be, you know? Fire. I'm going to reset these cameras for one second. Sounds good. <laughs> I know what you meant. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, wrapping up for you. So I think it's, uh, I think Dreamwake has ultimately had some success with it. I think it's interesting to reflect on the in honor of challenges and what you've learned from that and other bands you've been in. I'm sure in honor of wasn't the first band. I'm sure there were other. Actually, small, it was. Really? Funny enough. Yeah. Like officially, like I've had, okay. I've had other like little, there you know, like go. my, my little, Garage basement. Those bands. are the ones. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So those yeah, count. it wasn't yeah. technically the first one, but yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah. So looking back on those things that you've learned, like what are things that other bands can kind of learn from? So yeah, someone else is fourteen. They're watching this right now. They're in their first local band. They're trying to figure out what is that thing. I think the simple answer is time. Yeah. It's not going to happen overnight. Right. But what are things you do along the way that help you kind of find that moment? Um. So I guess as a broad answer just be open minded when you when you go out and do things you know you want to you definitely you want to go into things humble with a humble attitude um 
pretty much everything, regardless of what it is. Even if you're not going in public, just go into your music with a humble attitude. Go into everything about it when you're making a Facebook post, whatever. Um, treat everyone with respect. Um, and just, like I said before, kind of like search within yourself. If you're really trying to go for, for something as like a brand or, you know, in a more career sense, just find what you really like and what kind of speaks to you and sort of bring that to whatever product you're putting out, you know, whether, even if you're not in a metal band, I mean, Mm -hmm. just, just find, find stuff that, you know, within yourself that might be unique you know, some, maybe people haven't heard about it before, this or that, and just combine it with what whatever you're doing. I think you're right on there. I think it's uh, an interesting part that I don't think you give. I don't think you give yourself enough credit for Dreamway kind of being a unique version of what it is. Like I think uh, it's tempting when you're in a 14 year old in a band, it's tempting to look at Motionless and White or A Day to Remember or Knocked Loose and be like, "That's who I want to be." Right. Yeah. And it's like that's great. I hope yeah. you reach them, but you're not. They are a better version right, of it right. and it is their unique spin on what it is. Right. So it's, yeah, what is in you that is different and unique and it doesn't, yeah, you're not going to, it's not going to be an intentional thing. It's going to be right. looking at you going, what is genuinely cool to me? Let me dive into that and then something might attach to it. Yeah. I mean, it's all about, if you think about it, I mean, music is is 12 notes. There's 12 notes in music, really, if you think about it. All All songs, whether you're listening to Doja Cat or Snoop Dogg or Motionless and White, like you said, or yeah. Lorna Shore. You yeah. know what I mean? There's only 12 notes that you can possibly play. There's, like no, that. there's not more than <laughs> That two. makes me mad. Yeah, I know, doesn't it? But there's millions of songs, tri- probably trillions of songs in existence. Yeah. And, but that just goes to show that you can, you can put your own spin on things and, and make it work. I mean, bands have been playing the same chords for years and years and years and years, but they just when it comes to really putting yourself out there, it's a lot about showing yourself and putting that into your product, you know, and not just, not just showing yourself in a sense of like a video of you and your band being goofy in the basement, you know, if you're Mm -hmm. drinking some beers or whatever, you know what I mean? But like really like really find the message that you want to put out and put that in your music, you know, Mm -hmm. not just through the lyrics, but like through everything. Uh, in the context of Dream Week, does it ever feel confining to be kind of like you have this sound, you have this look, you have this style? Like, is do you ever wake up and be like, I wish we just did like a whole green video and like <laughs> green doesn't vid- or whatever, you know? Like, uh, it's yeah, is it ever tough to stay true to that sound or do you feel like you have the, I guess I'm wondering in the context of a 14 year old kid, like when they pick their first thing, like how much do you vary that thing and how much do you go, this isn't working, fuck it, throw it out and move on? So I think. This is kind of, that's actually kind of a, a balance thing. Mm-hmm. So you 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 want to you always should just do what you feel, you know. But you always also should be open to learning new things because you're never gonna really progress on your on what you're putting out if you don't actually improve your skill a little bit, you know. So you should definitely take a lot of time to to actually hone your skill, even if it's not fun. Like it's, it's not fun sitting there and doing exercises or whatever it may be to, to get your finger strength up and this and that, or especially, I mean, I look at my drummer and his, his exercises, like he's got to do all these rudiments and stuff like that. It's just, you know, it's, it's not fun when you're, you know, but it also is fun, you know, and it, you know, I say not fun in a, in a perspective of versus, you know, jamming out to your favorite song, you know, Mm -hmm. and obviously it's not, it doesn't have that same, uh, that same spark. But, you know, you have to understand that you're, you know, you're, you're working towards, you know, bettering yourself completely, you know, and then that way you can like, cause it, you're not going to be able to put out what's in here if you don't work on what's out here, you mm-hmm. know, yeah. you have to have the skill to put out the true, the true, you know, soul music, whatever, whatever it is. I'm also hearing you say it's about getting 1% better every day. And I yeah. think that's always kind of been my motto of like, yeah, I'm not going to make a Steven Spielberg movie tomorrow. Like, I, I think I can. I would love to. But yeah. I have no evidence to support that I can. Right. And there's a lot between me and that. Right. Uh, and so, yeah, it's 1%. It's what what is one thing that I can learn in Premiere? What is one thing I can do to make this lighting a little bit better? And understand that, yeah, I can't get there overnight, but I can do a little bit every day. And I have to trust that it'll add up because there's really no other option. Yeah. It's, you know, like I said probably three times in this conversation, it's a huge process. There's so many different aspects that go into it, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's actually what's tough about the question of, 
you know, a young artist starting, it's, it, you, there's not just one thing you can tell them that'll make them just be like, oh yeah, that's what I got to do. You know, mm -hmm. it's just, you have to, you kind of have to just put yourself out there in, in every sense of that. It, you know, go talk to people, even if it may feel awkward. I mean, that's, that's another thing I struggle with, struggle with too, is I have a little bit of social anxiety sometimes. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to people I look up to, you know, I kind of wish I had, um, had, had more conversations with them in the past. Like maybe just been like, Hey, like, just ask how they're doing, stuff like that, you know? And, and now I have that thought, like, I can be cool about it. But when I was younger, I didn't know how to approach that type of situation, you know? So, that, I mean, that's definitely something, too. Like, just talk to people. Because, you know, like I said, we've learned everything ourselves. But a lot of the things we've learned is because of other people, you know, and dealing with different situations with whoever it may be, um, you know? So it's just there's a there's a lot that goes into it. There's a there's a shit ton. <laughs> it's similar in the photo video world where you kind of hear talking about exercise and kind of doing the dirty work of things and also not being afraid to say yes and try this new thing or try this new thing. And right. yeah, with photo, it's the same of like, yeah, sometimes editing gets real boring and it's real boring yeah. to play with these things and figure out the thing. And then when you first get your camera, it's like, uh, like I got mine. And I was like, I think I like music, but to really know that I liked music, I had to go try concerts and try sports and try events and try wedding and like all this. Right. And it's like, okay, now I know that this is what I like. But when you first get in, it's like, I, I think I'm a music photographer and it's like, well, if I've only done that, then do I, yeah. know? Like, I have no sense of that. Right. Um, so yeah. I think a similar thing is probably true with music of like, yeah, experiment, go have fun, understand and yeah. take time to kind of learn yourself and learn what works for you. And the rest will kind of fall into place as it goes. Right. Cause I'm, I'm like, you know, that's kind of falls into the category of I'm, I'm by no means like a classical guitarist, you know, I'm, I'm definitely a metal guitarist mm -hmm. and, but that, you know, that's okay with me. That's, that's what I, what I like. And I've, you know, I've kind of tried different styles of music on guitar and different stuff. And I, I have, I, of course, you know, love to learn different things on guitar, not just metal, but when it comes to what I'm actually putting out, I am, you know, that's just totally me, you know, and you kind of have to just, you kind of have to find what you are and run with it, but also learn things to add on to that every single day. Like you said, the 1% thing, you know, so. Perfect, my man. Well, I appreciate your time. Thank you for coming through. Uh, just wrap it up. Thank you for having me. Uh, yeah. Dreamwake, where can people find you? I know we got some songs. We got some music videos out. Anything on the horizon we want to talk about or anything? Yeah. How do we find Dave Pazic? All right. So um, Dreamwake, well, we, we have a few songs out. Luna, Night Rider, and Midnight Rain. Midnight Rain is the one we just dropped a few days ago. Uh just put a music out, music video out for it. Um, that's everywhere: Spotify, YouTube, Apple Music, Deezer, <laughs> uh, My default. Am Amazon Music. Uh, you know, anything pretty much. We checked <laughs> off all the boxes when we uploaded it. So, if you like to listen to music, listen to that. Um, and we do have more music coming. Uh, we we recorded a bunch, you know, a while ago. So we've been preparing that. Perfect. Um, we are going far away to record our next music video. I can tell you that. Perfect. Um, and it's going to be awesome. We're going to have a special guest there. Awesome. Maybe some people can guess who that might be. Maybe not. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's going to be awesome. Um, and springtime is going to be a great time for Dreamwake. That's all I can say. Perfect, so. man. Awesome. Well, I appreciate your time. Looking forward to it. And yeah, yeah we'll have everything linked below for all the, the clicky people. Awesome. Perfect, Click that man. shit. <laughs>